Discover the tech that inspires the pros and powers today's music industry. Ah, yeah, this is the Music Gear Talk radio show. Powered by the mighty EnterTalk Radio Network. Connect to all things music at EnterTalk Radio. And that's the worldwide leader in music business talk. And my name is Florentino. And I'm here with you today with a very cool company out of the UK, uh, Aston Microphones. And we've got their uh, managing director, uh, the European version of a CEO, president, founder, all of those fun things. Yes, we've got uh, uh, Mr. Uh, James Young here. I had to look at your last name here, sir. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> no to, worries. I, 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 <laughs> so, hey, man, thank you very much for calling in from uh, the UK. This is this is great. We love we love having these overseas interviews. It's a pleasure to be with you, fella. Yeah, you sound you sound you sound really crystal clear. Clear. Uh, I don't know. I, I know Cedric's not on mic, but man, this is uh, you know. You'd think then that you know that it wouldn't be as clear, but I think in some ways it's been clearer than some of our other Skype calls that we've had. Yeah, let's let's not tempt Providence, huh? The wonders of modern technology <laughs> and international calls. You know, you never know where we could end up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, hey, man. Uh, you know, as we were talking earlier, uh, this this show is all about discovering great, cool new gear, and and in particular, this episode is uh, prepping for us for the NAM show, and uh, uh, you know. At this at this stage, we want to find out a bit more about Aston Microphones. Tell us, how did you guys get started? Um, what was the passion that led to the development of your cool products? Well, I've been in the microphone business for a lot longer than the two years that Aston's been around. Um, I, I started uh, I started as a musician, as most of us did in the music industry. Uh, went into distribution uh, and then got involved in manufacturing 15 years ago when I was the co-founder of another microphone brand, SE Electronics. Oh, okay, yeah, I, and, I, I know. Uh, in fact, I, I, I uh, think I, we have a couple of mics, SE microphones somewhere around here too. So yeah, sure. Cool. Yeah. So I had a, I had 12 years of uh, being a partner in that company and basically running the sales, marketing, a lot of the product development. Um, you name it, basically outside of the manufacturing, which is uh, based in Shanghai. Um, we did everything else from my, my business partners and I did everything else from the UK, um, did that for about 12 years. And then we had back in 2014, we had, a, uh, a bit of a parting of ways, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> and, that happens in companies. Exactly. Yeah. And then we, uh, you know, we, we sat down and went, okay, well, um, we spent a long time doing microphones. We know a lot about it. And I, I had wanted for a long time to build mics in the UK and so what, what sort of started out as a very squirrely situation has ended up being um, probably the best thing that's ever happened to me and my business partners in our, in our business lives because we have this amazing opportunity to give voice to uh, the UK music industry with the first really, truly current um, uh, mainstream microphone brand. Awesome. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it amazes me actually that um, – We've had an opportunity like that. Obviously, there's been some not very well known, but there have been brands from the UK, Calrec back in the 60s and 70s. Okay. Um, there's a boutique brand called Soundfield, who I believe are now owned by Rode Mics. So they, they started out as British. Um, and of course, Cole's ribbon microphones are made in okay. the UK. But yeah. that's, that's very yeah. boutique but there's, there's nothing mainstream. So to have an opportunity to actually be the people that are creating the brand, which is effectively the voice it's the first point of entry for anything analog in your studio when the uk music industry is so formative worldwide it's just uh it's well it's fantastic it is and i and i think that that's great are you are you seeing a lot of the studios there adopt your microphones um how's oh, how's the growth been well one of the big things that that happened for us because you know we've been working in the uk for a long time as our base and so i know a lot of um you know the, the top engineers and producers as you would expect um, and when we started thinking about setting Aston up, actually a, a, a number of those, 33 to be precise, um, a number of those people got involved in the actual development of the brand. And oh, wow. Some really top-end people, you know. 
Uh, we're talking about uh, people like Andy Brand- Bradfield, who's worked with Rufus Wainwright and Bjork and Chris Portry worked with uh, Bowie and George Michael and King Crimson most recently. And, and you know, we, we can all name drop, but the list goes on and on. It's really the, the cream of the British industry were involved in actually creating the sounds of the products. Very cool. And uh, right now, who are you, who's distributing your, your, your line here in the U.S.? Uh, that's uh, a, a guy called James Biddle, who's got a, a wealth of experience in microphones. Okay. Uh, he was the uh, he was the national sales manager for Rode in Australia for four years, and then the guy that basically brought Rode to the USA. And he set up his own company called Presidio Label, and he's distributing the uh, the product for us in partnership in the USA. He's been fantastic as well, amazing guy. Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been looking through these. There's a, a there's a good collection. Now, what was the what was the defining technology that you said this is the first one we needed to kind of base our you know base our, our our foundation of the company on uh what what type of technology and you know what was the what was the, uh, the specific product well i think you know when you're starting out you, you're either going to go um with a product which is uh something that nobody's ever done before and is a completely revolutionary idea or if you're going into an area that you know well what you're trying to do is make sure that you cover the important bases first yeah, yeah. and what's unusual about aston is we did a bit of both um, and, and it's unusual because you wouldn't expect that from a first suite of products from a young company. Um, so we knew that the the big sellers, the sweet spot in the music industry for microphones is to have a single pattern and a, and a multi-pattern uh, condenser microphone, large diaphragm condenser microphone in the kind of two to four hundred dollar bracket. Yeah. Any, any, any cheaper than that. And yes, it's mass market, but you're setting yourself up to be a brand that can't really be high end. Yeah. Um, and too much more expensive than that, and people are going to go, uh, you know, you're only expensive because you're made in the UK. So we had to hit that sweet spot. Um, but uh, we wanted to do something um, which was innovative. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were actually building the microphones, manufacturing them, not just assembling them or designing them, but actually manufacturing our products in the UK. Um, they had to have that innovation. They needed to have their own look and feel and kind of, you know, give a, a feeling that they're quintessentially British yeah. um, and they needed to sound as good or better, hopefully than the stuff that we'd worked on before. Um, so we set ourselves a pretty high benchmark and they had to be price competitive. And to do all of that with UK manufacturing as well was quite a, uh, quite a task. Um, as you can imagine, <laughs> you can imagine trying to do the same thing in the USA, compete with Chinese production prices, oh, yeah, make not, the product better. I don't think anybody's still doing that here right now. Yeah. So so that was our goal. And because that was our goal, it actually forced us to do something really interesting, which which usually and it maybe if we'd done it any other way, we wouldn't have got to where we are today. Um, we had to we had we really had our backs against the wall in terms of, OK, well, if we if we take products off the shelf in China and we and we convert them into yet another OEM brand, because there are so many Chinese brands out there with different badges on yeah, yeah, exactly. and we're not going to offer anything new. You know, all we're going to basically do is offer something similar again and probably slightly more expensive because it would be built in the UK. So we had to completely rethink microphone manufacturing from the ground up. We had to totally strip it down. And um, we, we we asked some really stupid questions. I mean, things like, does a microphone have to have a mesh head? And does it have to have the, the chassis separated from the mesh head? And does it have to have a capsule separated from the PCB? And the answer to all those questions is yes, yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> they do. But, <laughs> but in asking those questions, the next suite of questions that come along is, okay, why? What's the mesh head on a microphone for? And when you start thinking like that, instead of, hey, we're just going to build microphones and this is how you do it. You put a mesh head on, you do this, you do that. When you start asking those questions, interesting things happen. And, um, you know, when you ask people what the mesh head on a microphone for um, is for, usually the answer you get back is, oh, it's for protection. Or maybe maybe some people will say, oh, it's to stop plosives. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's usually actually, what I would think it would be. Yeah, there you go. And, and and actually, the two most important ones that nobody ever says are, number one, so you don't electrocute yourself, which is <laughs> – it's a throwaway line, but it's true. You know, if you, if, you, if you don't have that protection around a capsule, you've got 48 volts going across it. It's not a pleasant experience if you touch your lips to the capsule. I've done it a couple of times during testing, and I can tell you it's not clever. Um, 
but obviously you would hope that all the brands out there have got that pretty well sorted. So is that what you guys do there for 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 a good time, just to kind of get a little uh, excitement going? Go ahead, put your mic to the old electrical punch in the face. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) always fun, always fun in games. Um, So the other one is that it's a Faraday cage. Okay, and um, and when we looked at that and kind of okay, so so your mesh head is a Faraday cage. It's it's for plosive control, and it's for protection. Is that being done as well as it could be done? Because if you look at every single mic on the market, from an SM58 all the way up to U87, they've all got the same basic design, some kind of fixed, rigid structure with a mesh wrapping around it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you look at all of those mics, who hasn't seen a broken SM58 that needs the top mesh replacing because it's dented or or, or a, a condenser microphone where the grill's been bashed in. We all have, right? Yeah, the, the standard, you know, if, if they haven't been dented, then they haven't been really used yet, right? Exactly. And so we started looking at this and going, well, okay, so clearly there's, there's improvements that can be made to the way that these things are built that will protect the capsule better and stop the mesh from being broken. And we started d- digging into it. And one of the key features of our microphones that you'll see is they, the, the mesh head looks really different. It's got this waveform spring, which acts as a kind of um, a shock absorber. Yeah, I'm looking and at the Origin of, right now. That's the one you're referring to? Yeah, the Origin and, and the Spirit as well. And if you look at the the actual the mesh that goes in, in between that, instead of it being a fixed gauge mesh, it, it, it's, actually, it's actually this uh, uh, organic looking, uh, what we call knit mesh. It's stainless steel knitted mesh. Yeah, now, it looks almost the, like uh, steel wool. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You wouldn't clean your frying pans with it, but it's it's a bit <laughs> expensive for that. But still, it looks it looks a little like that. Now the the advantages to us building the mic like this are that you can actually drop our microphones, you can bash them over a table, and you you simply can't break them. The the mesh grill will actually uh, deform, and you can just push it back into shape with your fingers. So so, so offers, I'm going to interrupt you there for a second because hmm. uh, I've had this happen before. You drop a microphone, everything's protected on the outside. But you know the, the 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 capsules or something like that kind of shake and 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 basically they you know they 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 come off or something of that nature. You're saying that that's uh, that's highly unlikely with 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 the way your guys' design works. Almost almost impossible to break them. I mean, every every demo I do, I take a mic round with me and I deliberately throw it at the floor. We've had people hit them with iron bars. We've had mics come back to us where they've actually managed to dent the top of the the plate that's been run over by a truck, and they still work perfectly. They they are really bomb proof. These things. So if you um, if you're a producer, it's a, you you could keep one of these in the in the studio and throw at the singers or the or the musicians if you exactly. really want to, and well, then we we're not worry about the gear. Us, yeah, <laughs> we do get people saying to us, "Why uh, you know why, why do I need a mic that's that's that bulletproof?" But of course, if you're in education. Or if you're a commercial recording studio and people are coming in and out, there's a lot of abuse of products that goes on, you know? Yeah, they fall down. That's The reality is that they all, they will fall down. I don't care if how good you are. I'm, I'm really careful with my gear, and, and I've, you know, bumped a mic stand on an occasion and seen it go over and go, oh, my God, I hope that uh, hope the diaphragm's still still good in that. So, you know, that's that's yeah. that's a very, very uh, good to hear about, about your mics. And then, you know, from the same kind of mechanical thing, you look at the knitted mesh, and that works better as a Faraday cage because it's got lots of different aperture sizes. And for the same mechanical reason, it's a better pop shield, so you don't need a pop shield with our microphones. So when you start looking at it, we've reduced the cost of a mesh head on the microphone from on manufactured cost from about 10 bucks, which would translate into a retail value of about $50, down to about 3 So it's about a third of the cost has gone into the mesh mm. head. And yet, we've improved all three key areas of of, uh, of performance, and that was the special thing about creating Aston. We were forced to think about how we could reduce production costs, and by by working with some architectural engineers, we've actually managed to improve the performance of the product mm-hmm. and reduce the cost at the same time. So we've ended up with this um, uh, you know amazing amazingly engineered product. Um, very, very cool. Hey, James, I, I'm going to interrupt you now. We're going to go into a commercial break here. We got about 30 seconds into this. I want to give the the URL for the the website www. AstonMikes.com, A-S-T-O-N-M-I-C-S dot com. Uh, you go check out these mics. They're they're amazing. I, we uh, both my engineer and myself have been looking at uh, through these. I mean, I, I took some time to look them before, but as you're describing it, and I'm starting to hear the you know the the the, the build quality, and I start to see that. I start to look deeper into the the visuals that you have on there. It's pretty amazing that that, that I see here. Uh, we're going to be right back here in a few short minutes. This is Florentino on Inner Talk Radio. Music Gear Talk Radio Show. Stay tuned to hear more about Aston Mikes. 
Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Welcome to Music Gear Talk. Discover the tech that inspires the pros and powers today's music industry. We are back. This is Florentino on Intertalk Radio's Music Gear Talk Radio Show. And I need to give a shout out to our sponsors, Pitbull Audio at pitbullaudio.com, where they just want you to play it loud. Pitbull Audio makes it happen for folks. Top, top retailer here in the U.S. And uh, really appreciate them coming on board as a sponsor. And then, of course, SIR at sir-usa.com. SIR is the leader when it comes down to backline and even front of the house uh, audio. So if you've ever been on tour here in the U.S., then you've actually used SIR. And we are here with James Young of Aston Microphones, and we're talking about the Aston sound, or the British sound, I think, because you guys define that now as you've uh, worked with your panel of 33 experts in, de- in defining how this is all going to come out and re- you know reimagining what the microphone should be. So, uh, you know... Yeah. I wanted, to talk, I wanted to ask you, James, tell us about the Aston sound. Well, uh, that was another kind of happy moment, really, of, of being uh, being bootstrapped, you know, having to try and think by the, you know, fly by the seat of our pants. Uh, we had such an outpouring from people wanting to help us out, getting the brand started from the British production and engineering community that we suddenly realized, hey, you know, all of these brands that are out there, there's so many mic brands and on the whole, the way that a product is produced is that uh, a marketing and a sales team and an engineering team will get together. They'll decide on the spec for a product, what they want it to look like, you know, what kind of price point it needs to be in the features. And then the, the guys in white coats will go around or go away and build something. And when it's 90 percent of the way they're done, then they'll do prototypes and get them out for beta testing in the market with people that are working in the industry. And we turned it on its head. We went to all of these people that we knew that are top end British producers and engineers. And we said to them, you guys know more about audio than anybody else that's in manufacturing or distribution ever could because you're doing it full time and you're doing it professionally. So we invited them to do the sound engineering for us. Obviously, we did the technical bit. We chose the capsules. Well, we, we provided the capsules. We provided the PCBs. Yeah, yeah. But every we did six months worth of double blind listening tests on each element of the microphones that we produced. And this panel of 33 of the top UK producers and engineers were the people that chose by blind listening tests which direction the sound was going until we got to the final products and released them. And we've done all our products the same way. And 
in, in, a, in an attempt for us to try and do the best job we could working with these people, we kind of overshot the mark a little bit because every every review we've had, every producer that's ever tried the microphones or engineer has come back and said, you know, holy cow, you guys, how have you done this? These sound like three, four, five thousand dollar Neumanns and Telefunkens and, you know, and these are three or four hundred dollar microphones. And the answer is we didn't do that. These producers did it. You know, and when you when you put the hands of music into people who are true professionals, you're yeah. going to get good results. So it was a very cool thing for us to be able to work with these people. Yeah, I, th- I think that is definitely a testament to what you guys have uh, put together, because you're right. You know, we, de- we deal a lot with uh, microphone companies and, you know, sometimes you'll get some, you know, some uh, uh people who have been musically inspired and then they go out and want to create something. But usually it's one person or two people that are making that, that decision for that, for a startup company. In this particular case, you, you're, you know, you're working with some of the, 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 the best of the best with some of the best studios. And that's, uh, mm-hmm. that's definitely a testament. So let's kind of dig into it, man. Let's talk about the mics, what, uh, yeah. you know, uh, you know, the, the different models and where their, you know, where, where their usages are. And, you know, I, I've had, Companies say that this is a kick drum microphone, but it's good for voiceover and, you know, you have those kind of microphones as well. So I hate it when people ask me for applications because, of course, you know, the consumers out there, they all want to know the answer. You know, what what, what do I use for kick drum? What do I use for vocals? Yeah, yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, there are there are companies out there that are maybe a little disingenuous with their answers and kind of broaden their range so they can sell more stuff. The truth of it is that... Um, Mics are good on some applications, not so good on other applications. And really, you have to have a suite of products with different sounds and different responses so that you can pick and choose a bit like picking and choosing a guitar for a certain song, you know. Mm -hmm. So we've got three microphones. We've got the the Origin, which is a single pattern mic, uh, the large diaphragm condenser, the Spirit, which is multi-pattern, and the Starlight, which is a pencil microphone. Yeah. Um, but you can use all of them for vocals. You can use all of them for piano or drums or overheads, you know, and people do. We've got Jeff Dugmore, who's one of the biggest drummers in the world, drums for Tina Turner and Elton John and people like that and Bruce Springsteen. And he uses the origin on drums. We've got other people that are using the spirit. We've got other people that are using the starlights. The starlights are out on tour with Radiohead, for example, at the moment. Oh, wow. So, cool. yeah, there's a, there's a lot of big bands already using using our products. So for me, it's more about how do the mic sound mm-hmm. and what features do they have? Because obviously, if you want to do room miking, you really need an omni pattern. So that would discount the origin because it's single polar pattern cardioid mic. Um, but if you're doing, uh, you know, distance room miking with a stereo pair, then you can use the Starlight, even though it's only cardioid pattern. So it's it's really about applications for that match the feature set and the sound that you want in the room. Gotcha. And then of course, the Starlight has a. If I'm not mistaken, an extra little feature is that. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we're jumping right into it. Go ahead, tell tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll go straight, straight, yeah, straight for the money shot. Yeah, it's basically um, the starlight. The, the the feature that everybody keys into, of course, is the laser. Yeah, it's like ah, it's got a laser beam on it. It's the Star Wars lightsaber, you know, <laughs> and uh, and it does. It, it kind of cool. looks like one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it's a very cool feature. Um, you know, some people initially might think it's gimmicky, but we've got uh, we've got so many people using it now in lots of different applications. They're out on the King Crimson tour at the moment, the world tour, and they were used for the studio album, for example. And King Crimson have got three drummers. So you can imagine setting up every morning and making sure that nobody's knocked a mic stand in the studio in the morning when they come in to start tracking again. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a nightmare. But yeah. all you've got to do with the Starlights is turn on the Phantom Power and you can see they're in the right places. And ah. it's the same for recall for live, of course. You know, the poor guy that's got to set up three drum kits, every new venue they go to, when you mark off the drum kit with a bit of tape on the first night where the lasers are pointing, it means it's a two or three minute setup job instead of an hour and a half for each kit. So it's a it's a massive, uh, massively helpful feature. But the real feature on the, the Starlight is the voicing switch. That's what's very cool. Yeah, I was looking at that. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, you've got a, a few different features, but the voicing switch is... Is a, it's a three position, uh, like you can yeah. get the vintage, modern, and hybrid settings on that. So that's very cool, man. That's uh, now speaking of that, are the other two mics uh, that you have, and I'm going to come. We want to come back to the, the Starlight here, but with the other two mics, is there a certain type of sound that they 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 have? And you mentioned that they they're comparable. Yeah. I mean, they're competitive to say a Neumann who's, you know, depending on which one you get, if it's older or not, you know, you're talking a couple, $3,000 just for off the shelf one right now. But, mm-hmm. uh, uh, so 
what is this? What what kind of sound do you think that uh, this best describes? Uh, we we we're not a company that goes after trying to replicate other microphone company sounds. We would like to do stuff that's individual, and especially the way we developed them, it was all about actually people, you know, producers using their ears and telling us how it should sound. So it yeah. was it wasn't it wasn't a you know at no point did we copy other microphones. Um, but I would describe the origin as being not flattering because that always says to me, oh, it's covering something up. But it's a very forgiving microphone. So it'll let a beginner get away with a little bit more. If if you're a little bit overly harsh or sibilant, it'll it'll just smooth it out a little bit. It's a very natural and pure sounding microphone. So it's it's used in a lot of high end studios where you wouldn't normally expect to see a you know three hundred dollar microphone. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's a great beginner's mic. Whereas the Spirit is uh, not very forgiving. <laughs> you know, you need to know what you're doing because it's a uh, it's incredibly detailed, very open, lots of harmonic richness in there. Um, well, of course, that means that if you if you don't play very accurately or you you sing with a bit of an oink or a little bit off pitch or something, then it's you know, it's going to be a lot more noticeable. So it's definitely a professional's tool, the spirit. And it's the one that um, well, it's Noel Gallagher's vocal mic, for example. It was used on the entire new High Flying Birds album for all of his vocals and his electric guitars as well. Oh, very cool. Um, it's also the mic that Kylie Minogue's just used for her entire new album and so on and so on. So it's a it's an amazing vocal mic. But. Equally well, equally well, we've got people using it on guitar cabs and as drum overheads. So very versatile, but what, what are we talking price wise for for that one? Uh, U.S. It's four hundred bucks map in the U.S. So oh, it's wow, cra- 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 crazily inexpensive. Yeah, for what it does. Very very cool. Yeah, that, well, I'm gonna have to you know kind of on a side note, we can talk a little bit about this. Maybe you can refer us to your your distributor, but uh, we'll have to look at uh, getting that into Pitbull Audio. We got one minute left. I think we talked a bit about the the Starlight. Obviously, as a you know, uh, it uh, has some extra features. I want to take this time for the people that are attending now. Can you tell us your booth number? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can, but you'll have to give me a second. It's in the new hall. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, I, I, not to throw you off. Yeah, we've got about a minute uh, left in this segment. Here we go. It's uh, booth 18705, level two in the new hall, uh, just behind the Hilton. So it's the Pro Audio perfect, Hall. Perfect, perfect. For those listening who are going to be at NAM, make sure you check that out. If you're not going to make it to NAM, go to the website, astonmics.com, A-S-T-O-N-M-I-C-S.com. Check them out because they're amazing. There's also the Halo, uh, which is the, uh, you know, the, 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 I'm getting tongue tied here. The very high end reflection filter. There we go. Big, that's that's yeah, what we're yeah. looking for. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, James, it was great, great having you on the show here today, man. Uh, really Thank appreciate you. it. We'll, we'll see you over at the, the show, and uh, you know, st- stay on. I'm going to talk to you a little bit after after we go to the, the break here. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on InterTalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie's Groove.com. 
Ready to get your groove on?